What's up, beautiful people? It's your boy, Joshua Martin. Today, I'm going to be talking about my grading process and show a little bit behind the scenes of my latest film, Body and Earth. After doing some research, I found a YouTuber, and I'll link it in the description below, who used Color Space Transform uh, to get airy light colors, and more specifically, to get better greens and better highlight roll off. And I was very intrigued by this process, and I did like the results after my own testings. Now, from the time of this recording this video, when I first did this whole workflow, that was one way of doing it, and I went back and talked with my friend Joshua. He was, he was the one who did the grade for um, Lost Souls, the my past film in the summer. And uh, we did some more testing and he showed me some other workflows. So I'll update it or I'll put it in the description below for some different variations that you can do to get different results or slightly better results. So keep an eye on that. So let me show you what my timeline looks like. I have the VO, I have the sound effects and music. And as most of you might know already, Epidemic Sound is where I get my music and now my <laughs> sound effects. So just real quick, if you want to sign up for a free 30-day uh, trial, and you can cancel it or whatever, but the link is in the description below. I have made a small tutorial about why I use Epidemic Sound and the Stems feature. So check that out if you're ever interested or if you're looking for a platform. But getting back to the color grading process. Now starting with my exposure, of course, um, in this particular case, it was an overcast day. It was very soft light. So it was a bit challenging to make the frames interesting because there wasn't a huge dynamic range to kind of work with from shadow to dark. Everything was pretty even and flat. It's good in some cases, but in this case, I think it worked out pretty well. What do you think? So I exposed Sharon's skin around 65 IRE. And I used two lenses, the SLR Magic 8mm and the 25 micro prime cine now I do have to mention that i only tested this on the pocket and my friend josh bennett he tested on the pocket 6k um, i do plan on doing this with the fs7 down the road just to kind of see what i can get out of that as well so now going to my color tab here in davinci the first node i'm going to add is the cst um, so the color space transform now I like this process because it's very non-destructive. Um, that's why the whole node system is really great. I don't like grading in Final Cut Pro or um, Premiere because you have to use adjustment layers and they can get kind of confusing. This is a great workflow. DaVinci shines in this. Um, like I said, it's a non-destructive workflow. If you do turn on tone mapping and gamut mapping, the data after this node will be clamped or clipped um, the highlights I would prefer not to go that route just keep it non-destructive do your space transform and then what I do after that is add three no three more nodes or however more nodes that you want in this project you can see I have highlight shadow saturation white balance um, and then the grade near the end on the third node I add the Ari Rec 709 LUT and this is just a utility LUT um, and I used this as the base and then after that I got the base and I added as many nodes as I needed to get where I wanted to be at the end. So the middle nodes will be shadows, highlights, white balance, exposure, and color. Now the tone of this video, um, originally I had it quite warm and it didn't really feel the cold that because it was pretty cold when we were filming out there. So what I did, I have the buttery Lutz pack. Um, and I use the um, Blackmagic Pocket 684K LUT negative two contrast, and I turned that down to about 65% as my finishing stylistic node. And that added some blues, a little more greens, um, and I turned on the saturation a little bit as well. So that was really all of my process. Um, and just to kind of wrap this up, what I really like about this workflow is that I have as much control as possible from my knowledge. Um, and I can kind of just tweak a little bit how the color is rendered for the pocket. Now, my friend Joshua, he has some other methods that he tested and I'm going to test as well um, to give a little bit more dynamic range out of the camera. And I like it. I will definitely put it in the comments or the description below so you can kind of see the different styles of using this format. 
but let me know what you use in the comments below and this, this is a plethora of ways of doing this um, the next step I definitely want to figure out is how to make everything look the way it needs to look on different platforms I don't like the way IGTV renders and produces colors it flattens everything out um, YouTube and Vimeo seem to be fine but um, I definitely want to keep that consistent along the basis but if this was helpful let me know and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.